All right. Well, good morning. It's a surreal, day, surreal day here today. On behalf of our 65 full-time Moody Center employees, I'd like to officially welcome you to the Dell Technologies Plaza here at Moody Center. So. At today's event, we're going to be uh, officially cutting the ribbon for what will be not only the finest college basketball arena in the country, but also what will be one of the top concert destinations in North America. And today's ceremony is just the beginning of 12 days of fun we have slated here at the building, culminating with our official grand opening concerts with George Strait and Willie Nelson on April 29th and 30th. So I hope to see a lot of you guys back for that. We will start today by hearing from some of our key project stakeholders and dignitaries here on stage. And to kick off the morning, I'd like to welcome to the podium Kevin Eltife, Chairman of the Board of Regents of the University of Texas System. Thank you. It is an honor for me to be here today on behalf of the entire University of Texas Board of Regents as we open this landmark facility that will be home to Longhorn basketball and so many other incredible events. I want to thank our partners, Tim Liewicki with Oakview Group, Charles Atal with Live Nation, and of course, my fellow East Texas, Matthew McConaughey, and all of their teams for putting this partnership together and making this dream a reality. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> to Ross Moody, and the entire Moody family and foundation. We can never say thank you enough for all you have done for our university. The countless donations and projects, and now today, this incredible, the Moody Center. Your generosity is simply amazing to all of us and has made an incredible impact on thousands of students, and we are forever grateful for your kindness. President Hartzell and Chris Del Cani, Thank you both for your incredible leadership you have provided on this project and the leadership you've been providing for the last two years, which we all know have been incredibly difficult. So many great things accomplished and so many more to come because of these two outstanding leadership. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> to our incredible coaches, Beard and Schaefer, Thank you for bringing excitement back to Longhorn basketball. We look forward to watching games in your new home. We always want to be mindful that everything we do is for our students. We have over 35,000 applicants each year that want to go to this great institution, and we can only take around 8,000. Our job all of our jobs is to make sure we provide them with the most affordable, accessible education possible, along with an incredible student experience. They clamor for our Longhorn tradition, our campus life, living in Austin, which is the live music capital of the world. This facility adds to that experience for our students. We stand on sacred ground and on the shoulders of so many before us like Frank Irwin, Bill Powers, and so many more who worked so hard to make this great university what it is today. Thanks to this partnership and President Hartzell and his team, we are building on the past and opening what will no doubt be a landmark facility for the 40 acres for years to come. May God bless all of us gathered here today. May God bless the men and women in uniform around the world who are defending our freedom and democracy. And may God continue to bestow a special blessing on the great state of Texas. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Eltaif. Please welcome to the podium the President of the University of Texas at Austin, Jay Hartzell. All right, good morning, and, and thanks, Mr. Chairman, for the kind words for joining us today and for all the approvals that, you, that it took from you to get this, uh, get this done today. Uh, this is a really historic moment for the University of Texas and for the city of Austin. Uh, when I came down to college uh, from out of state to San Antonio, I used to wonder why people used to schlep up from San Antonio up to Austin to come see concerts. And then I grew, grew to learn it was a few different factors. Uh, Austin's the live music capital of the world. 
Uh, there are about 50,000 students who were fans uh, of the live music. And there was an arena here that was the Irwin Center. And what we're launching today is the next incarnation of the kind of facility that will bestow that same future legacy to maintain our position in all those dimensions. The live music capital of the world for Austin, Texas, a place where 50,000 students will come and not only cheer on our great basketball teams, but also enjoy some incredible events. And the kind of uniting facility that will be an inspiration to our campus uh, for the future. This Moody Center advances these two key endeavors. It will make our campus special. It also represents an innovative and a bold investment. We, it will lead not only to banners in the rafters of the center, but also strengthen our position as that live music capital. I want to thank the Moody Foundation for its incredible vision and generosity. We're extremely grateful to Chair Francis Moody Dahlberg, Vice Chair Ross Moody, and Treasurer Elizabeth Moody. The Moody Center is a novel public and private partnership, and I know we stretched some things and, and bent some things to make this happen. It required a really complicated but inspiring collaboration between UT Athletics, the Moody Foundation, C3 Presents and Live Nation, the Oakview Group, the City of Austin, campus leaders from many offices, and our construction team. I want to say a special shout out to Chris Del Conte and his, uh, his leadership and the entire athletic department. Uh, as you all know, Chris, he will at times wear you out. But then on days like today, we look back and say it's all worth it. So Chris, I, do, I believe we have the best athletic director of the country, and today's one of those days we get to celebrate. Thank you very much, Chris. So to everyone played a role in getting this magnificent facility done, thank you from the president's office. We really appreciate you. To Francis, Ross, and Elizabeth, we're grateful for your vision and your support. Enjoy the day, enjoy the arena, and hook them. Thank you, President Hartsoul. Please welcome to the podium, Chris Del Conte, Vice President and Athletics Director at the University of Texas at Austin. Hi, everybody. This is, a, this is an awesome day, isn't it? I'm glad you can all join us. Woo. It's like I've never spoken at uh, an event before. But before we get going, I, I want to talk about this building from, from a standpoint of a, of a symbol and just give a shout out to two people. Uh, a couple years ago when Chairman Altai became president, I mean chairman of our, our board, he asked us, can we make sure the University of Texas becomes a great partner? Because when you're outside of the, of, of the university, you see it completely different. You only see Texas. There's a lot of times there's silos within a department. There's silos within the university, how things get done. As the, as the, as the chairman talked about, it has been a brutal last couple of years. Chairman, uh, when you talk about a, a a partnership and putting things together, your vision is here. And thank you so much for that. I appreciate you more than you know, not because you're signing off, because you're at the top, you're constantly telling us, hey, this is how it's going to be, and here's how we got to do it. And you hired the perfect partner to lead us, and President Hartzell. Um, I'm honored to work for him, because he doesn't understand the word no. He says, wait a minute, why not? How do we harness the power of the University of Texas across all, all spectrums? And that is so refreshing, because I'll wear him out now. Like Ben Gay, constant heat. I'll come, I got this, and he's like, dude, get the hell out of my office. But I mean, we're going to do things right. Coaches wear me out on things, and it's because of you, President Hartzell. This symbol of a partnership is here. That's what you're trying to do across the institution. When you think of why Moody now, what's going to happen with the medical center and what you're building, what you're doing for our campus. Your two leaderships are inspiring, and thank you for leading us. To the story of where we're at today, can you imagine having an arena for FREE? How's that going to work? I remember it was Mike Perrin and I, Mike's here, Sean Eichhorst is here, and we're driving down to, 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 to meet this esteemed group here. And we walk in and we're like, how are we going to tell them that we want an arena for free? And I have no idea. We sat down and all of a sudden here comes Matthew McConaughey. And we're like, oh, I know every movie from Days and Confused. I start reciting lines. And Sean's texting me, don't blow it, dude. You, 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 you know, you, you got all fever right now. I, I know, I know. It's shape up, shape up. And then here comes, uh, here comes Charles Atoll. And he goes, and Sean goes, hey, do you think we can get Aerosmith tickets? I go, for sure. That guy <laughs> found the ACL. We're, re we're ready. But the awe for me was Tim Laiwicki. Because I knew what he did in our business, in the athletic business. And I'm sitting there looking, I'm going, that's the guy that built the Staples Center. That's the guy that's doing the, the, the key arena in Seattle. I was floored. Love you too, fellas. But I was absolutely blown away by this individual right here and what he's done. And there's two books I read constantly. I read the Bible. 
and I, and I read uh, every year, I try to win seven habits of highly successful people. And there's a chapter called Find Win-Win. And when we presented this idea, led by our, 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 our chairman and our president, can we have an arena that will collaborate, bridge people together? And in that idea is a win-win. I, I presented this idea, and Mr. Lightwicky goes, there's not a shot that we're going to do this for free. And I said, what do you mean? Because we are going to do it for free. We're going to figure it out. I walked out of there, and I was so shook. I, I said, Sean, did you hear that? I think we can do what the president wants and what the university wants, and we can build something that we can collaborate with everybody. And it's because of that win-win attitude we are here today. And there's no shortage of a partnership, Mr. Laiwicki, that you have with the MOC and Charles that we're here today to do this because of you all. But there was constant arguments and conversations the last two years to get here. And there's three people. Derek was out from a business standpoint on campus. He signed a lot of checks. He says, yes, we can do this and move mountains. We had, we were, there's, three, there's three holidays I missed. I missed Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's because we were signing the deal. And, and, our, and our attorney, I don't know if he's here today, he was an unbelievable attorney at law that made this happen. Where is he? Is he? I don't see him here, but I, 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 if I point him out, I would look at, well, Dennis, there's Dennis right there, of course. He, he hated me more than anybody right now. But, but we were here to get this put forth, and it was awesome. It was really awesome. And then an unsung hero for me is Sean Eichhorst that, that was here. That Sean did an amazing job just steering the ship every single day, making sure that we got it here today. So you three, I appreciate you more than you know. Um, but you all here, leadership, you guys made this happen. And then the idea of asking for a donation and to say, Mr. Moody, for you to come up with $130 million of change with your family, that tells you there's a hell of a lot more there. So I'm coming back, God dang it. <laughs> but I appreciate you all being here there. Thank you very much. Hook them. Thank you. Please welcome to the podium Tim Lywicki, CEO of Oakview Group. I'm, I'm learning how to do this right. So first of all, Bevo, I'm very deeply sorry. My dog attacked him in the stairwell this morning. <laughs> Bevo won. So on behalf of all of us, the partnership and OVG, everyone at Live Nation, Matthew and his incredible wife, Camila, who is really the inspiration of much of what you're going to see. Matthew, myself, Charles, we'll take credit for a lot of things. She was unbelievable. On behalf of all of us in this partnership, we're deeply grateful to the University of Texas, to the board of directors, Jay and his leadership, and in particular, CDC and the athletic department, giving us the honor and giving us the responsibility of being your partner in this beautiful arena. Thank you, we're extremely grateful and we take it every day in, in light of, the, of this great tradition you have created with this brand and this university and we're not gonna let you down, thank you. So, <clears throat> I'm gonna do this real quickly. So first of all, Matthew, Camila, Charles, Live Nation, Francesca and the OVG team, unbelievable to have a vision where you start from a premise of we're gonna spend $375 million and then give the arena to the University of Texas. But not only is that what we did, that's the right way to do it. And we're proud to be part of the campus. You're, yeah, by the way, Jay's right. CDC will just wear you out over the two years of negotiation, but seldom have I ever negotiated with a partner that became a great friend, and that's CDC. So this requires vision. This is the first time this partnership, this kind of a established relationship has ever been created in the history of the NCAA. I like to say, if the old building's the drum, the new building is the voice. It's the voice of a campus, it's the voice of Longhorn Nation, it's the voice of the Austin community. And we have to represent anybody and everybody within Austin, this community, and Longhorn Nation. So to CDC, his team, um, yes, Dennis and Carl, who had to negotiate this and make sure we gave this building away for free. To Sean, who is an unbelievable, determined advocate on behalf of CDC. To Sandy, who really was the inspiration of this idea, God bless him. To Daryl and Jim, who now inherit the operation. Thank you to everyone, not only at the university, but in particular at the athletic department. We're grateful, we're grateful to be your partners. 
to the two coaches, we are very proud to give UT the greatest building in the history of the NCAA in which to build this program around. We look forward to being your partners and many years of success. To Gensler, who designed this building, amazing what you were able to do, huge credit. This is really one of the most amazing buildings I've ever seen. For, for me, this is my 21st arena, the best dollar for dollar design and value I've ever seen of any arena anywhere in the country. Thank you, Gensler. Where's Sid? S see that young man in the cowboy hat back here? He's the boss, and he's with Hunt, and Hunt built this. They built it on time, and they built it on budget. Sid, to you and the Hunt crew, deeply grateful. Thank you. Great job. So, the guy we wear out on a daily basis is Brian with Icon. Brian's probably not here. He's probably installing something inside the arena. To Brian and the Icon team, again, deeply grateful for the job you've all done as the project manager and getting this done on time and on budget. To the OVG team, so Steve Collins is here. He's the president of development. He's the one that oversaw this project day to day. And again, imagine this, the voice, this beautiful, moody structure behind us. It started during COVID and we ended today with COVID still lingering. And despite that, we were able to deliver this on time and on budget because of the dedication of Steve Collins and his staff. Steve, thank you very much. <laughs> Jeff and Casey, you will learn. These are the two best operators in the business. And to the entire team under Chris Granger and OVG facilities, and Ken Garber and OVG Hospitality, they now take this trust and operate it day to day. The moment of truth they create will be spectacular. Jeff, Casey, we couldn't be more proud to have the two best management people in the business operating Moody Center, thank you. So, so last but least, th this is unique, $375 million, and then we donate this building back to Chris, Jay, and Longhorn Nation. But it's done because of partners, partners that believed in what we were doing and jumped on board early in order to take this private public partnership and create a voice. And it started with Ross. So Ross, the commitment you made early on before we even had anything to show you, we had concrete and steel. Ross and CDC worked out one of the largest gifts in the history of the university towards their $6 billion campaign and he did it because he believed this would be the voice of a generation of Longhorn Nation and of a community. Thank you, and to the Moody Foundation, God bless you for your belief in Austin and UT. Thank you. We have eight founding partners that you'll see inside today. And so they're unbelievable, the commitment they made, and they made it early on. From Brown Distributing, thank you very much, to Dell and their plaza that you see today, Indeed, Hulu, Self, Germania, but most of all, one person that got behind us day one, and he lent us the money. These are the important people. So Peter and Truis, Peter, are you here? Please stand up and take a bow. Peter was good enough to give us the money to build this program, thank you. Finally, we, we're only as good as the company we keep. At OVG, we're blessed to have the kind of company we inherit here, to have all of you to have this university, Longhorn Nation and UT, to have Austin in this community. Francesca and her team and the job they did, unbelievable. We could not be more proud. And when you come in this building starting tonight with Earth, Wind and Fire, it will be an unbelievable experience. Proud to be a part of The Voice and proud that this voice will represent this community and Longhorn Nation. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Please welcome to the podium, founder of three, C3 Presents, Charles Attal. Hello. When we got started on this project, when I was brought in in uh, 2017, I called Matthew and knew him well, come to the festival, but we never really hung out. And I said, hey, this is going to be fun. You know, we haven't seen any renderings yet. They, they tasked Matthew with making sure the look and feel of the arena was authentic, it was Austin, it was Texas. And I said, whenever you're ready to get together, let's get together and start talking about it. I thought we'd get together 30 minutes, he was super busy, he's got films going everywhere, speeches, talks. 
calls me the next day. He's like, let's get, let's get to work. And I said, okay. So let's, let's meet up. He came over to my house, and I thought we were going to talk for 30 minutes and keep moving. Matthew brings out the sketch board. It looks like he went to architect school at University of Texas. And hours on hours, he sketches, hand sketches, every detail of what he wanted in, in, in this arena. And it was mind-blowing. And it, was, it, it, it caught fire with me out of the gate where I didn't even know where to start. Um, so Matthew, thank you so much for your countless hours and days on the detail and the hand drawings that you drew from the porches to the crowd, everything else that's going on in this arena. It's, it's truly remarkable. Um, fast forward four and a half years later, I'm walking through the arena with, with Tim and he's pointing out everything that we need to fix, replace. I can't, I can't see anything. And I, I fancy myself, you know, somebody knows how to build a, you know, I know how to build a small club or or a, 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 a little music venue, but he was pointing out all these small little details, and then he gets real excited, and he said, come down this corridor, let me show you something. I think we're going to look at a huge, just came in from shipping because it was stuck in, in uh, you know, from COVID, and some architectural feature. No, it's the HVAC system. And he opens the doors, and he's showing me the blowers, and he's telling me how it's going to blow through the seats, and, and how it's, you know, environment friendly, it's better, it's going to be, you don't have to pump it all the way through the whole building. And he's so excited. I get excited again. I'm like, wow, this is, this is truly amazing. We walk down to the Germania Club, and there's, it seems like a million tiles, black and white tiles. And it, it, it's for days. And he said, find the flaw. And I mean, it's like a maze of black and white tiles. And he, he walks up to it because he doesn't, you know, I'm not going to find the, the, the tile that's off. There's a tile this big that's out, and it should be a different color than it is. And he stands over it so I can find it. But that's what makes Tim Lewicki the best building developer operator in the world. Not the United States, but the world. And it's because of Tim, Chris Del Conte, Matthew McConaughey, and Michael Rapino. These guys made this building happen through COVID. It's, it's truly remarkable. They were on time and on budget. And it is a unicorn venue. This will not happen again for what, we, what happened in, uh, for budget and on time. I grew up in the Irwin Center. I went to my first basketball game there. I went to my first concert there, and it shaped me as a young man. I remember I had the best times with my family coming through that building, and I've been in there a thousand times um, through good and bad. And I will say I'm really excited for the city of Austin and the state of Texas to create their memories in this building for decades to come. Hook them. Thank you, Charles. Uh, look, look around uh, at every sign, every door, and eventually the roof of the building, and you'll see uh, our next guest's name, Ross Moody, trustee of the Moody Foundation. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, needless to say, it's, it's great to be here. Where I stand here today looks very different from where many of us were standing in December of 2019. As I look around, I am truly awed by the scope scale and beauty of Austin's newest and premier sports and special events venue. From concerts to sports to graduations, the Moody Center will be an amazing place to gather. I'd like to quickly thank a few people and organizations for their vision and for their blood, sweat, and tears for making the Moody Center a reality, especially a reality during a, golden, a global pandemic. First, thank you to the University of Texas for your vision, and for allowing the Moody Foundation to participate in what will be one of the Foundation's most treasured gifts. Thank you, Chairman Eltif and President Hartzell. Also deserving thank yous are Athletics Director Chris Del Conte, Sean Eichhorst, I believe you're over there, and Drew Martin. Coach Beard and Coach Schaefer, thank you too for all you've done. Thank you to the Oakview Group, Especially thank you to Tim, Francesca, Jeff, and so many others at Oakview. Also a big fat thanks to Charles Atal and Charlie Walker with C3 Presents. Even though I don't recognize half of the performers currently booked at the Moody Center, <laughs> Swedish Hill Mafia and Yankee Daddy come to mind. Gotta keep the lights on. <laughs> Without C3 Presents, Austin would not be the city it is today, and the Moody Center would not be able to reach its full potential. And Mr. McConaughey, thank you. Thank you for all you do for the University of Texas and the city of Austin. 
and for being a big-hearted good guy who I might add my daughter wants to take a photo with later on. <laughs> I'd be remiss if I didn't also give a shout out to the folks at Ginsler, Hunt Construction, and the project manager, CAA Icon. And while the unsung heroes of much of what the Moody Foundation does, I also want to thank the Foundation's employees, many of whom are with us today. Would you guys please stand up? <laughs> These men and women were instrumental in making this gift happen, in addition to so many other gifts around the state of Texas. Please give them a big hand. Last and perhaps most importantly, let me introduce the two other trustees of the Moody Foundation, my sister Francie Moody Dahlberg and my daughter Ellie Moody. The Foundation's gift to the Moody Center would not be possible without their support. Both Francie and Ellie bought into UT's vision of a new world-class basketball and entertainment venue and have supported the University of Texas, the city of Austin, and me from day one. Without these two amazing women, from my perspective, I would not, and perhaps the Moody Center as well, would not be here today. So thank you, Ellie and Francie. We are a great team, and I love you both. <laughs> Needless to say, I am very proud to be up here today. All of you all did an amazing job, and for that, I am very thankful. Thank you. We need to get you down here for Swedish House Mafia here, later on this year. We've talked about the music story, but now obviously the winning tradition that Longhorn Basketball will have at the new venue. Coach Vic Schaefer, University of Texas women's basketball coach. Man, it's a great day to be a Texas Longhorn, isn't it? Um, as a Texas boy, born two blocks down the street at Breckenridge Hospital, uh, raised by a Texas family, I can tell you I couldn't be more proud to be your women's basketball coach and to have our team and our program move into this incredible facility. Um, on behalf of our program and my staff, uh, I just want to say thank you again to the to Gensler Architects, to the Oakview Group, to the Moody family. Um, just uh, and all the workers. I think we came over here at the topping out, and if you know anything about my team, coach's team, we play really hard. Uh, we take great pride in wearing the burn orange and white, in representing such a a prestigious university, an impactful place. And I'm going to say that the workers, the people that spent endless days, tireless hours, day and night for the past two and a half, three years, I'm going to say those people could play on our team. The attention to detail, uh, which is what we take great pride in, I know Coach and I do with our own team, uh, what an incredible place that they have built for us. Uh, we talk to our kids all the time about, do you want to impress me or impact me? And the answer is impact. Many, many people in the world don't get that opportunity, but there are those in attendance today that had that opportunity and they grasp it. This place will impact not only our student athletes, our university, but will impact a community, a city, a state, and really a country. So on behalf of women's basketball, on behalf of this proud Texas boy, I want to thank everyone that had such an incredible part in this. You know, when you wear the burnt orange and white, you have to be different. And this arena will cause us to be even more different. It will cause us to be even more prepared and on point. And we will do that with great pride and honor. We are honored to be in this incredible facility and we will represent you and all the Texas faithful and Longhorn Nation with great pride. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you to those that made this happen. Praise the Lord and hook them horns.
Thanks, Coach Schaefer. And welcome to the podium, Coach Chris Beard, head men's basketball coach. Yeah, Vic's a really easy guy to follow, isn't it? I'm about ready to go take a charge. Uh, got back to Austin about a year ago, and as many of you know, the real estate market is very challenging. I, I did not, I was not aware of this situation where somebody would build something for you and give it to you. So, boss, he gave me a couple of realtors' numbers. I didn't know about this whole deal. So, uh, now briefly, on behalf of everybody in our small part of this deal, men's basketball, we just want to say thank you to everybody that made this possible, and uh, we're going to do our part. We're going to do our part. We, we look forward to seeing all of you back here in a few months when basketball season starts. Um, we're blessed and uh, very appreciative of playing in the best arena in the world, and uh, we're going to do our part. Hook them. Thank you, Coach. And last but certainly not least, please welcome to the stage our Minister of Culture, Matthew McConaughey. Hello, Austin. Hello, University of Texas. Hey, hey. Uh, I've got some thank yous uh, to get here. Thank you, Tim Lawicki, for inviting me in. It was about four or five years ago. He's coming to Austin. Invited me to come in and be a partner on this. Um, got to know Charles the Tall a lot better. I remember of that day he was talking about leaning over the railing at his lake house and saying, this is an original awesome Austin feeling right here. Let's bring some of that feeling into this arena, into the Moody Center, which you'll see when you're in there. Um, thank you to CDC. Mr. Del Conte worked closely with you through the years and I've had a great time. You, I could say, yeah, you probably wore me out a couple of times too, but I've gotten used to it. I kind of enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ross Moody, the Moody family, this wouldn't be possible without them. A thank you to Icon, to Gensler. Look, with designs, I mean, I'm pretty good at dealing with an airstream. <laughs> There's a little more square footage in, in here to look at. It opened up my aperture. Um, it sure did. Um, when I came on as a partner in this endeavor um, more than three, four years ago, before the first shovel hit the dirt, that two goals and hopes for this place. One was to make the first place that every big band world-class act wants to play on the globe. Two, that it be the last place that any basketball team visiting the University of Texas Longhorns, that it be the last place that they want to play. With the creativity and expertise of a lot of the people that I just mentioned and everyone here behind me, I'm happy to say that the Moody Center is engineered, designed, and aligned to do both of those things. From the communal flow inside, from the relation to the fans in the stands, to the stage in the court, we've designed this Moody Center to be an awesome experience for everybody in it. Whether you're on the floor, whether you're in the corral, whether you're in the lower bowl, whether you're in the boxes or the mezzanine, we've tried to create an original and authentically Austin experience for every single fan. The, the Moody Center is built for success. So, the bones of the Moody Center are in place. It is, as I said, engineered for success on and off the court. It is ripe, it is ready. I understand it's got electricity, the water pressure's good, the speakers are wired, the concessions are loaded. The goals on both ends of the court will both be 10 feet high, but it's still only a building. It's not a home yet. It's not a home yet. Because you gotta fill a place with soul if you're going to make it a home. And that's why now comes the fun part. <laughs> yes, it's time to bless the mood. we got to fill the mood with soul. Yes, it is time to bless the mood. It is the live music capital of the world community of Austin, Texas. It's time to bless the mood. It is Bevo's time to bless the mood. It is the University of Texas women's basketball team's time to bless the mood. 
It is the University of Texas men's basketball team's time to bless the mood. The media, the reporters, outlets, you who will share the stories we tell in there, it is your time to bless the mood. It is the Moody Center staff's time with their hospitality and service to bless the mood. It is the UT student section's time at courtside in a standing room only, 270 degrees, as CDC likes to remind, I always say, around the floor. We call it the corral. It is your time to bless the mood. Yeah, it's your time, it's my time, it is our time to bless the mood. We've got to fill this place with soul. We've got to fill this place with the best of ourselves every time we go in it. That's how we're going to bless the mood. We're going to bless it, as I said, by bringing the best of ourselves every time we come to it, every time we show up with respect, with honor, with pride, and who we are and why we're in this place every time we are in it. We're going to bless the mood. We're going to bless it by making it bleed, burn orange every time our teams are on the court. We're going to bless it with victories. We're going to bless it with memories. Yes, it is time to bless the mood because we got one time for a first impression, one time to set the tone for our expectations in our new house. And that starts right now. It is time to set the tone, time to rock the mood. It is time to roll the mood. It is time to party in the mood. It is time to be the loudest fans in America in the mood. It is time to play like a champion in the mood. It is time to own the mood. Yes, it is time to believe that what happens in here from now on can and will change the world. Yes, will you do this with me? Just because it'll make me feel good, it is time to bless the mood. Are you ready to bless the mood? Are you ready to bless the mood? Are you ready to bless the mood? I need some help, please. Are you ready to bless the mood? Are you ready to? Come on now, give me some backup. Bless the mood. One, two, three. Are you ready to bless the mood? Are you ready to bless the mood? Are you ready to bless the mood? Come on, CDC. Are you ready to bless the mood? Are you ready to bless the mood? Here it is. Are we ready to bless the mood? It starts right now. Thank you, Irwin Center. The memories we have there, we're bringing over here, but it's time to turn the page. Let's keep writing the book. Let's bless the mood. Hook them. Thank you, Austin. At this time, we ask all of our folks on stage to walk to the front of the stage where we're going to cut the ceremonial ribbon. We're going to little countdown 10 to 1, and then we're going to cut it on the 1 is when we do cut and bless the mood. All right, everybody, 10, everybody together, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bless the mood, baby. 